Um, yeah, many people have asked me uh, what I was referring to by my talk. Uh, I am talking about uh, challenging patients. Uh, what I'm referring to is shortness of breath. All right, so uh, I don't think we have the, uh, the audience input devices today. Maybe I can just ask you from a show of hands. If you have a patient who's ASA 4 and they're unable to lie flat, anesthesia says we can't do deep sedation with an LMA, we can't do a GA with a tube, and the patient can't lie flat. There's no compromise. There's no 30 degrees. You just can't get them to that position where you feel you can do them safely. What are your choices? Let's just have this by a show of hands. How many of you would do face-to-face -face FACO standing up? One? Could you, um, could you actually come to the microphone and uh, tell us uh, how you do that? Full disclosure here, PGY4 uh, resident. Um, <laughs> this no. is even more impressive. <laughs> no, because I've, I, we've had a case like this and the staff elected to do the patient standing up and I was, my job was to hold the head in place, basically. <laughs> but it, it worked. Excellent. It worked. Did yeah. you do that on a slit lamp? No, no, it was in the OR. So how did you, well, was, how did you see was, what you were I was, doing? I should say it wasn't 100% like, like this. It was kind of a little bit inclined. But oh, you mean inclined on a bed? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay, so a uh, couple of face-to-face -face standing up. This patient's still on a bed. What about face-to-face uh, -face sitting up on a slit lamp? Anybody done that? Nope. Um, what about declining surgery? Just saying to the patient, I'm very sorry, but um, we can't do your surgery safely. Any show of hands there? Yeah, a few more. What about other? Any other suggestions? Anybody? No? Okay. So um, I think most people would fit into the category of C and just say, I'm sorry, uh, we have to decline surgery. It's just if we can't get you in that position to safely see what we need to see, we can't do you. And this is the category that I fit into for almost the last 20 years until I came across something called OptiFlow. Um, OptiFlow is a form of continuous high flow oxygen. I've been amazed by this, and I just wanted to uh, share it with you because I think it has the potential to help a lot of people in Ontario and perhaps outside Ontario. I have no financial interest uh, in this device. I'd also like to uh, keep you awake by telling you a little bit about the most beautiful place I've ever seen, French Polynesia. So a couple of months ago, I saw this article. I was really interested in it. It's a group in France who published... Um, two patients that they did face-to-face -face sitting up FACO on a Hogstrite BQ900 slit lamp. And um, I was really quite impressed to see their setup here, how they did this technically. Um, I think technically it could be quite challenging. I think you have to be a good surgeon to do this. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, maybe this isn't the best way to handle these patients simply because every once in a while you may have a complication. And what do you do when you have a complication? Do you ask your retina surgeon to do face-to-face -face retina surgery at the slit lamp? You're kind of in a pickle when that happens. And this is where OptiFlow comes in. So OptiFlow, again, is a form of continuous high-flow oxygen. In our hospital in Lindsay, it's used in three situations. The most common one is pneumonia. Uh, it helps to keep O2 sats up, it mobilizes secretions. It's also used as an ICU bridge, so patients who get extubated who need to be transferred to the ward, it provides a bridge between being intubated and being on nasal prongs oxygen. Patients who've had major abdominal surgery, they have difficulty taking large breaths because of their big incision through the peritoneum. Something like OptiFlow takes the work out of breathing for them. Let's move over to French Polynesia here. So this is North America here, this is Australia here, Hawaii is over here, many of you have been to Hawaii. If you go to Hawaii in the North Pacific and then you go straight south, way down to the South Pacific, that's where French Polynesia is. Most of you have heard of Tahiti, you've seen the Instagram pictures of Bora Bora, but where it gets interesting is out here. So if you move up to the northeast into all these little atolls, if you're not familiar with what, what an atoll is, an atoll is basically a sunken volcanic island. So for instance, the Hawaiian Islands are volcanic islands. They are sinking. Another million years or so, they won't be there. 
And what's going to be left? It's going to be a coral ring. And that coral ring is called an atoll. So the maximum elevation of an atoll, this is basically what they look like. There's a lagoon side and an ocean side. Maximum elevation is about 10 feet. Gorgeous places. This is probably where you will find the best scuba diving ever. So what's the difference between nasal prongs and optiflow? They're very different. Nasal prongs, usually it's delivered at about three to four liters per minute. The maximum is 10 liters per minute. Nobody uses 10 liters per minute. Why? Because it's uncomfortable. It's cold, dry, low flow gas. Cold, dry, low flow gas. What's OptiFlow? OptiFlow is warm, moist, high flow gas. Warm, moist, high flow gas. Flow rates here approach 60 liters per minute, six zero, 60 liters per minute. So again, nasal prongs versus continuous high flow oxygen, cold, dry, low flow gas versus warm, moist, high flow gas, improved comfort is the big difference and less work of breathing. So what about ophthalmology? Where can we use it in ophthalmology? Two big groups that I see here, severe lung disease and severe heart disease. I can't take the credit for OptiFlow. The credit goes to an anesthetist in Lindsay, Dr. Andy Knox. He came up with this idea with RT for patients needing cataract surgery who can't lie flat because they get short of breath. I had a patient who was sent to me for a second opinion. They were denied surgery elsewhere. I thought that was very reasonable. I said, I'm sorry, but I don't think I can do you safely simply because I can't get you in the position where I can see what I need to see to do your surgery. But just to make sure we're covering all the bases, I'm going to send you to one of my anesthetists. Let's see what he thinks. And I was thinking about deep sedation with an LMA. He spoke with RT and said, why don't we try OptiFlow? They talked to me about it. I said, well, sure, I'm, I'm happy to give it a try. I spoke to the patient. She was more than willing to try it, uh, understanding that if it didn't work, at least we have peace of mind. We've tried everything. We tried it. I was truly amazed. It worked. I didn't think it was possible on this type of patient. So again, it decreases the work of breathing, relieves shortness of breath, and allows people to lie flat. Back to French Polynesia. This is where we stayed. So there was 10 of us. We rented a boat. We stayed on the boat. Here's a picture of me. You can tell it's me by the hair. <laughs> we, uh, we had a local dive group here. We rented an RIB and went scuba diving. Out in the ocean, this is the clearest, bluest water you will ever see. This is the signal for dolphin. Uh, you basically try to find the schools of barracuda. That's what dolphins eat. Where there are barracuda, there will be dolphins. This is the best scuba diving I've ever done in my life. You do have to be careful. You have to watch your depth gauge. There's no uh, frame of reference. The water is so clear. This is uh, an electric impedance tomography going back to OptiFlow. Basically, this is like a functional CT scan. So you're looking through the chest. You're looking at the lungs. Uh, this is basically airflow entering the lungs. My apologies, let me go back. So this is low flow oxygen, basically nasal prongs oxygen entering the lungs. Now this is optoflow entering the lungs. Big difference. So it definitely decreases dead space. This is my first case. My first case was the 75 year old female to which I was referring. End stage COPD, lung cancer, post lung resection grade four dyspnea, total care, unable to walk without severe shortness of breath, unable to lie down, sleeps in a chair. Her vision is her last communication with the world. I have her permission for this video. So a book tray is the first case of the day, lots of time. This is the OptiFlow machine. Basically, you hang a bag of IV fluid here just for the moisture. You connect to the anesthetic oxygen source and then you plug it into an AC outlet, that's what provides the warmth. There's only three settings here, temperature, flow rate, and FiO2. So we use 34 degrees, flow rate of 45 liters per minute, and FiO2 of 40%. Now you'll see the patient sitting on the edge of the bed here, she's tripoding herself up, she's pushing on the bed with her hands to try and get her lungs as open as possible. She's short of breath, just sitting here. Here's the RT attaching OptiFlow, you just wait. Have them sit there and just wait. Look what happens. Her hands come off the bed spontaneously. Once she relaxes into it, lets the OptiFlow do the work for her, her hands come off the bed. We then lie her down for the first time. She hasn't been lying down in over two years. 
We move her into the right position because she can't get there herself. Let her lie there. She hasn't been lying horizontal for over two years. Once she's happy, she's got good saturation, she feels comfortable, anesthesia is holding her hand, no sedation. Make a nice big drape, I talk her through it. RC uh, RT rather is standing by uh, adjusting uh, optiflow settings if needed. I was truly amazed. I didn't think this was possible. I've been doing this for 20 years. Not that many things truly, truly surprise me now, but this did. Uh, as she was being wheeled out, she asked where she could buy one of these machines. <laughs> so again, OptiFlow is warm, moist, comfortable, high flow oxygen. End stage lung disease, end stage CHF. And the CHF group is an interesting group. I just did one two weeks ago. Again, I thought this was maybe a little bit different just because when this group lies down flat, they get pulmonary edema. But it worked. It worked on this patient. Um, again, very exciting stuff. I wanted to share it with you today. I'm going to leave uh, one more image here with you of French Polynesia. If you haven't uh, already booked your uh, flight while you've been sitting there watching, uh, you might as well do that now. This is the most beautiful place on the planet. Thank you very much.